Last summer, a man named Nathaniel Green went missing and was nowhere to be found. Countless searches have been made to find this vanishing man, but about a month ago, around in his home, located around the suburban metro area of New York, he was found dead with abnormal marks, and it seemed he was attacked in his home. There were no signs of forced entry or foul play found in or around the house. Thousands of needles punctures half of his body. They couldn't examine the lower half for it was missing. Half as if he was torn in half. Amidst the painted crimson walls, they found a black tape recorder that showed what seemed to be his final moments. If I shall die before I wait, I pray the Lord my soul to take. <laughs> Seems kind of ironic now. Oh, um, you probably don't know who I am. Or what I've done. I could most likely be some deranged serial killer who would love nothing more than see you choke on a noose made of your own intestines or something. Well, I'm not. I was a normal guy with a more than normal and very dull job that I was stuck in. I lived alone and was happy with my quaint life. Suddenly, things got weird. I'm not talking like an awkward moment weird, but I mean, just completely insane. It all started when I woke up a week ago. Lazily staring at my blazing alarm, I thrusted my body with what little energy I had to turn it off. Then I got myself dressed, headed to my job. I don't have a car, so public transit was my only option for transportation. Walking through my bus stop, I noticed something that was never there. Silence. Living in New York, you never hear this, so I got a bit tense. Finally I made it, but it was, I don't know, empty. No more than 20 minutes passed, and my bus got here. I got nasty scowl from the driver as I paid the fare but I hadn't done anything that I knew of. As dangerous as it was, I couldn't help but doze off. I had some weird dream, but I don't even know if it's a dream now. It was about me getting ready to go to sleep, but I was looking through the eyes of another person, seeing as it was a dream. I was more than happy to play along. I sneaked around staring at myself, avoiding neighbors and headlights and random passers by. And I gotta admit, it was fun. Until a dog began to bark at me. He yapped constantly and it began to blow in my cover. After a quick thought, I ran and grabbed the dog by the neck and slammed it on the ground. He tried to bite me, but I shoved a rock in his mouth and shoved a couple of, it, of teeth of his. He be his eyes began to bleed and become infected looking, but I ignored it in the heat of the moment, and knowing that the fight would alert everyone faster than barking. I snapped the dog's neck that let out a low groan and decayed before my eyes. Creeping back into my house, I noticed I wasn't there. Instead, there was some figure. He was tall and pitch black. It seemed as if light was being sucked in by his skin. His arms looked broken and his fingernails were nails. Nine inch steel nails stained with blood and rust protruded from his fingertips. He had no real facial features as if it was a blank canvas. His eyes were a soft blue and glowed dimly in the dark house. He seemed more lost rather than menacing, like a child searching for his mother in a mall. I guess I lost balance and stumbled, making me fall all over some wayward trash can. I looked back at the figure, and he slowly turned his head. His eyes quickly changed from the soft blue to a dark blood red, looking right at me. I was scared, but I froze. A loud tearing noise came out as he opened his mouth. It was jagged and uneven, but blood 
profusely as if he was breaking away skin and muscle to open it. The hole contained several hundred rows of teeth that were needles. His bones cracked and contorted, his body making every sound more painful to watch. I ran from the sight when my legs finally let me, but it bursted through the wall at an incredible speed. The creature screamed, letting out a piercing noise that sounded like high-pitched dial-up monomes and static. It made my ears bleed as I fell in pain. It stumbled and staggered, trying to get away, but it jumped on me and forced my head into his mouth. Suddenly, I was awakened by the bus driver, who kicked me in the stomach and flung me out of the bus. I don't know what happened, but I was in complete shock. I went to a nearby dollar store and bought uh, some cheap tape recorder to log my dreams on. My name is Nathaniel Green, and I hope I can sleep soundly tonight. January 5th, 2011. I had another one of those dreams. I woke up in the middle of, of a dirt path around a dense forest. But for some reason there was a fog so thick, the only way I could tell it was a forest was the fact of me bumping into several trees. I looked around to see if there was anything. To no avail, suddenly I heard a dog barking from behind me. I turned around and followed the sound with hurried but cautious running, as to not trip one a weird root or rock. I found the dog which seemed like a normal black dog to me. It looked at me happily and ran away. I chased it down something seeming like it was the only living thing that could possibly help me. I suddenly tripped on something in my mad dash for hope. I went to check what it was and I found a small black but still incredible interesting stone. It shined so brilliantly. I took it thinking I must have had some value or something. I picked myself up and saw a figure of a man in the horizon. Hey, I yelled. He quickly turned and around and looked at me. Who are you? I worried, sat, sat, really sad. Suddenly I heard a child's whisper from behind me. Death. He was always death. I spun around and saw the same black dog I was chasing except it was covered in blood and it had an a rotted eye gouged out. And now, I am death. As it sunk its teeth into my leg, I screamed and fell to the ground and it began to drag me along the rocky surface, tearing away at my scalp. I screamed and shouted for it to stop. And in that instant, the dog was scared and ran off. Unable to stand properly, I crawled away until I bumped into what I thought was another tree. I looked up and saw those eyes. I quickly tried to stand up and run, but instead I stumbled around and fell like a drunk. The black creature walked up to me and began to cut my legs, slowly leaving me completely immobile. Trying to fight him off, I remembered I bought the rock in my pocket. I took it out and started bashing it in the head. I growled and hissed, and me as the beast I was, was dazed for just a moment. I stood up and bashed its head in with the rock and watched as his eyes slowly dimmed out. I sighed in relief and plopped my body on the floor from exhaustion and possibly the loss of blood from my legs. Then I noticed something wrong. I saw a pair of red glowing eyes look at me from a tree in the distance. The another from the left of me and the two grew to ten to Twenty. My God, how many were there? I screamed and begged for mercy, but the last sound I heard before I blacked out were multiple mind-numbing screams of the creatures that were ready to feast upon me. My alarm screamed at me to wake up as I nearly had a panic attack. I decided to name the dark creature Pestilence, as it was the horror eating away at my sanity. I grabbed you as quickly as I could, but when I stood up to get dressed for work, my legs were cramped so badly I had to crawl.
January 8th, 2011. Help me, I can hear them. In the walls, just scratching and tearing away at my walls. I don't know how they came in. The, the, there was a door, just a door. Nothing special, just plain wood. I, I opened the door slowly, but there was nothing there, just a wall. Here. Walls, 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 walls. Oh, I'm sorry. What is this? Hello, book. Aren't you a pleasant sight? I love you. Love. Love. Hello? Are you the one who pushed me into that wall? The goddamn wall? Who are you? Leave me alone. I don't deserve this. January 9th, 2011. They almost came in last night. I never did finish my story, did I? There was a wall. It looked like it was made from some sort of smooth material. It was incredible to the touch. I couldn't believe I was the first to find it. Or at least I thought I was. Suddenly I heard sharp sobbing. I spun around quickly and saw a small child. She had long dark hair and was wearing something that looked like a pink ball gown. Worried but still cautious, knowing this was a dream, I kept my distance then and turned around, her sobs growing even louder as I did. I walked long enough to find a door and rushed to see if I was if it was a way out. Happily I swung the door. But there was just that familiar silk like material that was soft, but now a sort of crimson red. I heard a faint groaning from the distance and felt something sharp trail up down my back like a knife. How dare you ignore me? I turned around quickly to see that girl flying at me, giggling and laughing as I tried to run. She grabbed me and slammed me on a wall. I got up quickly. She was gone. I got up and walked to the door, still wondering what it even meant, and felt a force push me into the door uncontrollably. I screamed as I woke up, but was only in bed until I heard them. The low groan of pestilence surrounding me in my own home. Help me. Please. Help me. January 10th, 2011. That's it. I can't take this anymore. I'm starving, starving and I'm feeling faint. I hear them walking through the through my halls, scratching my walls, knocking over things, breaking windows, but <clears throat> they're not coming in. I barricaded the door with a drawer last, and a night table in my bed. I knew it, it wouldn't hold them back, but <clears throat> it just made me feel safer. They've not made even a single dent or a hole in the wall that leads to my room. I know what they want. My wondrous notebook. My friend on this journey. I have a confession to make. I know why they came. Why they only picked me. It was New Year's Eve. I was at a party that, what, what, that was happening. We closed a huge deal on some Victorian house near East Street. Oh yeah, I never told you. I worked as a real estate agent, but regardless of that fact, we finally were going home. <laughs> and I drank a couple of shots of vodka and was almost finished off by some tequila that was being saved for less. So I was obviously drunk. <clears throat> Stumbling into my car, I had that car before last month, but it was recently stolen. And seeing what took like an eternity to find the keys in my pocket, I managed to put it into the ignition and drove off. I went through some roads that I knew wouldn't be occupied with cars or police for that matter at one morning. I eventually became sleepy and dozed off for I still don't know how long. But I woke up at the sound of the car jumping around hazardously. I ran to the front of the car seeing for maybe a raccoon I hit, but this animal had a hoodie on. I panicked to see 
if the person was okay, so I grabbed the body to see who it might have been. To see golden hair and an unrecognizable mush of brain and skull. She was holding on to a leash where a black dog lid choked by the force I had hit her. I quickly grabbed the woman and the dog and put the bodies in the trunk and backtracked to a bridge I went through on my way here. I warped the body in one of my car's carpets and dumped the body in the river. That girl who slammed me into the wall. Those creatures. That dog. It was my fault. So now I do deserve this. I move these unnecessary objects. I'm sorry. To whoever you were, goodbye. Days later, a body found in a net of fishermen along the coast. The body later identified as Alice Green, the ex-wife of Nathaniel Green, and her dog Watcher were buried in their respectful places. May you sleep silently.